I recently did a very scientific random survey of people in this parking lot I'm filming this video in, and it would appear based on my findings that 2020 is the worst year ever. I know, not exactly news to you, you're living in it. So I decided we should get a bit nostalgic and go way back to the good old days when some scrappy young guidos from the shores of New Jersey warmed America's heart, when straight guys were ridiculing their friends by forcing them to drink sugar with their alcohol, a concept that was novel at the time, when your phone and the thing you played music on were quite possibly two different things, when a bright young fella named Tayo Cruz was making catchy jams on the FM radio. That's right, today we're going all the way back to 2010, a simpler time with skyrocketing unemployment, a deep economic recession, and hedonism heavy pop music. Okay, maybe it wasn't that different. In this video, I'm taking all the Billboard Hot 100 number one hits from that year and ranking them from worst to best, 17 songs in total. And there were some big stars this year that had multiple number ones and a couple of stars that you totally forgot existed. And we're gonna go through all of them right now. I feel like the Black Eyed Peas missed a big opportunity here to dress like bumblebees in the music video. I've actually always felt this way. Also, when researching this song for this video, I discovered halfway through it speeds up and becomes even more repetitive than the first half. So I guess until now, I've never actually made it through the entirety of this song. Anyway, I hope to never hear this again. Generally speaking, there are three eras of Eminem. The hasn't aged well shock rapper, the motivational speaker who just conquered his demons, and the mumble rap hating old man yelling at Cloud. 2010 was the time when era number two, the motivational guy, was getting really popular. The whole album sounds like this. Somber melodies, Eminem screaming about getting clean and singing way too much, cringeworthy after school special, humorless lyrics. Yeah, this was a tough listen for me. Next. It's your mom's favorite Bruno Mars song. I'm sure this was a big hit at prom, but too sappy for me personally. I'm glad to see Bruno evolved into the 2010s version of Morris Day in the Time, but lest we forget, before that he was basically Louis Capaldi. I don't want to disparage the pop rap talents of B.O.B., but yeah, I'm pretty sure Bruno carried this one to the top spot. He was in full ballad mode around this time. As for B.O.B., I wonder what he's up to these days. Oh wait, yeah, he's a flat earther. That's weird. Man, Will I Am was really a superstar around this time, huh? This is basically a Black Eyed Peas song with extra auto-tune on Will I Am's vocals and Usher filling in for Fergie. And Usher, by the way, is in trend hopping, late career, and definitely mm, not peak form here. Honey got a booty like pow, pow, pow. Honey got some boobies like wow, oh wow. Yeah, those lyrics are embarrassing. This song is very much of its time, which is to say no one was talking about this in 2011. Just gonna stay. As I mentioned before, recovery was a big comeback moment for Eminem, and a lot of these songs were really popular, but probably none more than this one. I wasn't kidding, the whole album has this vibe. This one only ranks higher on my list because Rihanna gives it her all on the chorus. Katy Perry, also at her peak in 2010, notching up several number one songs. This motivational ballad about being a firework, it's the worst of them. It's the chorus that started a decade of bad 4th of July dad jokes. Rihanna hasn't released an album in forever, but back in the day she was well known for being ahead of the curve on pop trends. Most of the time she was, but on Only Girl in the World, she's just sticking to the current EDM heavy shtick that was all the rage. Sometimes you just gotta give the people what they want, you know? Nothing special here, but more Rihanna to come. Uh, stay tuned. Break, 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 break 
I don't know a thing about Tyro Cruz, and neither do you. You might remember this song, though. It's pretty catchy. Also, ludicrous. Even with a half-assed verse, Luda made most things better around this time, so I'm good with that. Now this is how you do a big hook EDM pop 2010 song with a huge shout along uplifting chorus. Take note Katy Perry and that is advice that's 10 years too late. Tonight we're going hard, 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 just like the world is ours. Remember how the whole Kesha with the dollar sign persona was ridiculed to no end when she first came out? Honestly, I think most of the music on Animal and Cannibal has held up incredibly well, considering it was basically the sound of Top 40 Radio at this time. For those of you who weren't in on the joke the first time around, now that you know Kesha was being pretty tongue-in-cheek here, I would revisit this with fresh ears and maybe more of a sense of humor, you know? Like I said, Katie was on fire in 2010. Speaking of tongue in cheek, one look at this super dumb music video should give you an idea of how serious we should take this era of pop music. It was fun as shit, nothing more, nothing less. Katy Perry made a timeless summer song made for hanging out at the beach. Completely lowbrow, totally infectious. Don't even act like you don't sing along to this one. A karaoke staple for ages to come. Well done, Katie. We've reached the top five, and you know I'm a sucker for one-hit wonders. Okay, these guys apparently had some other hits, but the less we say about Rocketeer, the better. Ugh. Yikes. I have no idea how a song like this makes it all the way to number one, but whatever. Different times, and it's a banger. Lyrically, musically, this whole thing hasn't really stood the test of time, but I think it could still work on a ritzy car commercial. Elon, give these guys a call. I don't have a whole lot to say about this one. It's just got everything you would want from a 2010 pop hit. Rihanna in her prime, a very young Drake at his dumbest. The square root of 69 is a sum, right? Cause I've been trying to work it out. Uh... Ah, to be young. Come here, rude boy, boy, can you get it up? Come here, rude boy, boy, is you big enough? Oh wait, no, this is the one. This is A plus Rihanna. Sexy, dominating, empowering. The song is catchy as hell. This is a damn perfect pop song. It's the right mix of instant nostalgia, catchiness, naivety. The title is apt. It really does sound like a teenage dream. It clearly visualizes the throes of the most intense, exciting relationship of your young life. The chorus works as a torch ballad, something you scream at the top of your lungs on your next road trip, banging on the dashboard, like the best pop music through its hook, its narrative, its delivery, it makes you feel like your youth and that intense first time connection will never end. Teenage Dream feels like we will all indeed feel young forever. A sentiment I think we can all appreciate revisiting right about now. Man, 2010, okay. What a wild year for pop music. Feels good to get away from Gen Z for a bit. Am I right, fellow old people? Okay, and the number one, number one song for 2010 is, let me look here, let's see. Am I reading this right? TikTok? TikTok? What the fuck? Okay, oh, okay, right. Okay, I'm being told Kesha is referring to a clock and a party that don't stop. Don't stop Also, looking at these lyrics, apparently dentists were very irresponsible in 2010 because Kesha was rinsing her mouth out with Jack Daniels. That's not good. In all seriousness, I've already talked about Kesha and how her early work has gone through a much deserved reevaluation in light of everything that's happened to her and the industry and the world in the past decade. TikTok was the very first number one of the 2010s and the world's introduction to Kesha. And even though sonically it can be seen as a relic, of its era, I think given the context surrounding it, it's become a pretty important song. 
and also it's still incredibly fun, which was definitely the vibe of the moment. America was going through some pretty hard times in 2010, still reeling from a huge recession, a major housing crisis, high unemployment, and the biggest ecological disaster of our time. And perhaps more than any other time, pop music was a means of escape and distraction rather than reflection. And taking the gold medal for this era of pop music hedonism was the glitter-covered, reckless, dollar sign in the name alter ego of one Kesha Siebert. And we endlessly thank her for it. What songs were your jams of 2010? Did these ones bring back any memories? How would you rank these number one hits? Let me know in the comments below. I'm Ben the Playlist Fiend and thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time.